Hey, Sir Glines from the Automator. And uh, the other day, I forget why I wasn't available, but um, I had asked Isaiah to talk to Tank about using the case uh, command and auto hotkey and why you'd use it over the if else. And then um, they had the call, but then they they started talking about some other stuff. It was pretty interesting of of like auto hockey version two, um, the fat arrow, um, lots of different you know ways to implement stuff in version two version versus version one, uh, and and then just a lot of other stuff. And then trying to find um, I think work with a HTML GUI uh, and connect to an object. Um, so keep in mind the following video isn't a planned lesson. They were just two geeky guys talking, right? And I listened through the whole thing and I thought, you know what? Um, there's some interesting stuff in here. And for those of us that are a little more geeky, you might want to hear these guys just uh, discussing different approaches and doing things. Um, and again, it, it you know may not be your cup of tea. So if, if you're not geeky, you probably don't want to listen to the rest of this. But uh, if you are, give it a listen. Cheers. Quick uh, conversation. He just wanted to know. Um... We were talking, discussing a little bit about uh, the switch command because we were, uh, one of the scripts that I was doing for him, uh, I started using it and he was like, oh, oh, you're using the switch command. And I was like, yeah. And he said, like, uh, why is that better than an if and else statement, right? So we kind of like went a little bit about it, but he remembered that you kind of like used it a little bit I'm just starting to use it now. I haven't really used it that much. And uh, he was wondering if you had any opinions on it or any information about why would you think that uh, the switch command is kind of like better or the same uh, as using an if else statement, if not, you know, those kind of things. It's not something like that, that it would take too much of your time. You know? It's just something quick. Okay, so uh, first things first. Um, the the there there's no there's no performance bonus or anything like that for it um mm -hmm. I, you know i i think it's a little bit reader read more readable however you know the the bottom line here is uh or, or the main question is why um and what the switch command is, is built for, and, and really every language, is to examine one value for multiple possible, uh, or one variable or, or expression, whatever, for mm -hmm. multiple possible uh, uh, values. Uh, right. So I could write, um, you know, if X is two, and else if x is three or else if x is ten or yeah exactly like different over and over and over and and it really it, it doesn't hurt anything to do that or i can write switch x and then case two case three case five case ten right right now uh, now this is the the one thing that i was kind of like uh maybe that would be a benefit but then i tried it and it didn't really work because when you have the if else statements there are certain situations in you in which you well well first of all you have nothing being examined in your switch statement there no i was just check i was just doing some some checks manually like this because then i i know your point like it would be like grabbing the script file right just doing this and then just saying like if it contains that but I would have to use the functioning string function. So yeah, in the end, I, I, I ended up doing the same thing as an if else statement, right? Uh, if I could, in each case, just specify what it should contain, right? But in my case, I would have to do some regular expressions um, to find that out. So again, I, I have to use a function anyways. So so long as I need a function, then the switch statement doesn't really help me much. But the point that I was actually trying to do, and then the thing that I said, like, maybe this would work, but it didn't, is the fact that if you have an if, if else statement and two cases match, if two of them would match the same uh, variable, right? Say, for example. Same statement. Same statement. Text say, the, right, the yeah. No, then, then I would say that as it is an if else statement, one of them gets executed and the other one doesn't get checked. So for that reason, 
the order in which you put the if else statements matter a lot, right? And I was going to say, maybe with the case, it's not like that. Maybe the, if it matches the case, it doesn't matter where it's located. But no, it is actually, uh, for example, these two cases here, this case up here and the second one, both match the, the case where a script full path either has the percent signs around, because I'm, I'm actually just matching that if I'm trying to capture icons from a, from a file, right? And you know that you use the menu, menu tray icon thing, right? So I'm just catching the icon itself, right? And I'm putting it match icon. Now, if in that icon, they are using a variable, especially if they're using a script full path, then I just remove the variable and go ahead and use a path that I already have and put it with the icon file and the icon file. So I, I do that myself. Now, if it is a variable that is not the script path, then I don't want, I, I, I don't want to deal with it. I just remove it and use the icon from the auto hotkey script itself. So basically what this does is that, uh, as you can see, we're listing the scripts and there are some situations in which, for example, this script does not have an icon or it has a variable in its icon name. So we just use the auto hotkey icon in there instead, right? That's what I'm doing. But as you noticed, a script full path sometimes might be surrounded by the percent signs. So both cases match. Why? I'm sorry? Why? Why yeah, because, you... because you might have menu, uh, tray, icon, and then you say a script full path or you might have it like this. So both of those situations could match. The first one here matches with this guy here, and the second one here would match with this one as well. So if, if, if I didn't have this case here, it would still match because I'm matching anything that has percent signs around it. So both of them would be matched by different cases. You see what I mean? Okay. Now, uh, now, 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 here's the thing. If I put this case on top, it will match this. It will use the auto hotkey script path, and then it will not do this. So they are exclusive. And the funny thing is that they actually, the position of them really matter, which I was, I was going to say, maybe the, maybe the switch uh, statement doesn't have that, uh, that issue, but yeah, it does. In it, in my case, I wouldn't. I was. I wanted it to always match this one in particular all the time. It doesn't matter where I put it, but it doesn't. That that that. Right. Uh, well, well, hold on. I have a couple questions here. Right. Script icon. Script object icon file. Right. Uh, what is that? No. So the script object, by the way, is just. Uh, from a for loop that I'm doing. Okay. I have, a, okay. I have an okay. object from menu handles that is grabbing them. And uh, each those menu handles are kind of like, uh, let's go ahead and just pause for a second. Let's do this. It automatically. Oh, come on, really? Doesn't matter. Right. So, what it, 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 it is just an object that contains the name of the script and some information about them, like their handle, the icon file, uh, their path, right? So some basic information about the script. Now, when I go ahead and do this, the for loop, then this is an object by itself that contains whatever is be below the script name. So it is kind of like a, its own object in itself. That's the reason why I put it that way. Okay, but but I, I guess here's what I'm here's what I'm uh trying to understand is why would the object have the string that exists in the actual script file instead of the value i'm sorry why the object has the string that's configured in the command on the uh, in the script so menu tray icon uh, yeah. So, you know, so one percent. of the, yeah. So basically, you know that what 
uh, what I do for Joe is like quick scripts and so on. Now, there's one way for us to try to get the icon from the tray menu, right? Which is something that I wanted to kind of like do. But the problem with it is that the only thing that I can get is the icon handle. I cannot. So for the menu tray icon command, I cannot use the handle here. I would have to convert the handle into something usable for the menu tray icon command here. So instead, what we did is something quick. We're just going to go ahead and read the script itself. So we, we list anything that it says uh, an auto hotkey script. We go ahead and okay, read so it. So you're reading it. You read the script file. And just catch whatever the menu tray icon they have uh, in their setup. Because if it is a script that has an icon like this one, somewhere up there, they have to use the menu tray icon command. So I just catch that and just forget about it. For okay, now. So, yeah. so, so, so I'm going to ask you a couple of, uh, of, of dumb questions because that's what I do. <laughs> All right. I do, so, right? All right. So uh, we, 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 have, we have whatever that icon file value is. Which right. is whatever they put on the script directly, whether, whatever and, they put there. And, and, and going out away from the code for a second. And yep. going away, uh, and, and so the the situation or or the use case that we are trying to resolve, mm -hmm. uh, it sounds like you care about uh, uh, whether or not it is already set to that script's path. Uh. Yeah, because, well, not, yeah, that's one of the use cases, because most of the times they have the icon right, right next to the main script or in a folder right next to the script, right? So they have an icon file that is right next to the script, and they use that. Sometimes they use, use a DLL file, but sometimes they use a variable for the path. Like, say, for example, they use uh, a line file. For example, our line script or something like it just grabs a random variable and they use it. So long as they're using variables, I don't, I cannot resolve variables from a static script. So I will just use the auto hotkey one. If they are using the script full path, I already have my path here. So I already extracted the path. So I wouldn't use the variable itself. I just use the path. And if they're using a DLL, then I don't care. I just use whatever DLL they're they're just using. So th those are the three main uh, situations right, so that I'm testing. We, right. we, we've got a DLL situation, right? Uh-huh. Um, we've got the variable that is actually the script path that we care about. Right, which in that case, I already have the path, right? And and pretty much everything else is going to be ignored if it is a variable. We use the A K. Yeah, is, right. So those are the I three can. situations that I'm going to handle for now. Yeah. Okay. So here here's my uh, here's my uh, I guess. Uh, like, why would I use the switch statement instead of an if, if else statement in that all case? All right. Right. May may I uh, uh, have control? Yeah. Control. Yep. Yeah. 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 Sure. Hold on. I sent it. Okay. So what about uh, and, and unfortunately, um, how did I get that? I want to not sure. Probably if you if you put it in in um, in parentheses, maybe that would help. Like the um, right. Okay, so um, <coughs> I've got um, DLL. DLL. Uh -huh. Right. Sorry, uh, you're 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 gonna see the way I. Oh. No, a script full path without the HK. Yeah. That's why. But yeah. it is okay, yeah. 
Uh, and um, anything else would be like uh, uh, see yeah so instead of three cases it would be only two cases oh well hold on no um no 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 instead of that it, instead of everything else would be the percent signs that's what i'm kind of like uh, if if there are variables that's the third case that i'm actually oh, checking. oh okay so and if there are variables i do want to perform an action variables if it is a variable and we just go ahead and yeah, so that's the one, and this one is for variables. You can't really say, is it a variable, because it could be an expression. It could be a function call. Right, yeah. So well, what I meant is just using the percent signs, whether it is like forcing an expression or having percent signs and having whatever between percent signs. So yeah, those are two different things, right? So forcing an expression, or having um, variables uh, or function calls uh, enclosed within percent signs. Those are two things. So maybe that I would put it in a separate thing, like force expression. And um, but are you going to do something different if it's a forced expression versus an expression? No, no, no. That's the reason why I put right. them together. Right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, because. Really, the, the test is the same. Is there a percent sign? Right. Any percent sign. Right? Am yeah, if it is percent signs, no, 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 that looks good. Now, the one thing that I do not like about the default here is that huh, I thought that the default would be executed every single time, but it doesn't, so. No, 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 the default is what happens when none of the- cases None of them matches, right? But uh, you know that in, other languages, you have this fall through thing, and if yes, it, yeah, the and case, fall the through default gets gets executed yeah. with the default at, at yeah. least. But in AutoHotkey, yeah. it's not like that, right? So, no. Now, uh, so uh, let's go, let's go back to that after a minute. Um, okay, so. Um, You know, really, uh, I'm, I'm looking down here at what you've uh, kind of already done a little bit. I mean, I, I I'm, I, I, I want to. Uh, so, so what I want to do is I want to. Uh, break this down into three different approaches, one with switch and, and one without for the sake of comparing. Um, but I wanna make sure I, I totally understand this use case correctly before I, I do it. Um, no, no problem. Uh, but I think, I think the main idea behind the, the call was basically like, um, should I really use a switch or is it better to just use if else statements? Why would I do that? Like, why would I use a switch case, right? Now, what I'm understanding right now is that with all this code that I'm doing here to do the checks, like a switch doesn't make much sense because the case is for it to be as simple and readable as possible, but those lines of code don't help on that. So unless, and this is the thing, so you see, right now I can file contains something, right? So it contains information. Now, can I work on the information without referring to script? Now, I know I know that I could do this, uh, for example, right? And that, for example, would make it so that if I can file contains, right? If it contains, the that word exactly like that, then it would work. But what if it is not exactly like that? What if I want to match something that is, uh, well, probably what I could do is kind of like a variable uh, or do something like this, probably do that or for forcing a reg match, maybe for matching something in part, maybe that would work. 
Okay, so I, I think the, the step here is, is, is uh, we're not really looking for uh, specific values, and that's the thing. Specific so, values. Right. However, uh -huh. however, however, if I did uh, something to uh, some kind of uh, uh, processing of the value of script icon file, so um, and and just for the. Um, oh, like just, a function, okay. Yeah, right. And, that returns uh, a value that then I could take a look at. Right, and so maybe I say uh, 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 return. I would put the returns first, like every single return, whatever it would return, so that I could use it in the case statement. Uh, I'm, I'm going to work. No, that doesn't really, that, that just duplicates effort. Um, yeah, I, I, I just can't, I can't see why or why you would use it here. Um, uh, a you know, case, I, right? I, I, I would, I would probably simplify some of these statements a bit, but, um, I, I just don't. I don't see using the uh, switch. The switch case, right? So, it so just doesn't, it doesn't make sense here. Right. That's what I'm thinking. That's what and I'm I, thinking. I, but, but that's the thing. So, uh, why would you think that it doesn't make sense? And why do you? So, right now, I know that it's working. So, I know that each of my cases are working. The script works fine. So, I can use it. But does it make sense? Like, should I use it? Now the question is, in our in our case, like, uh, when would you use a switch case? Now here I'll I'll, I'll show. Uh, to the, uh, call share. Turn it. So do, do you want to to stop the? I wanna I wanna uh, share my screen because I'm. All oh, right, right, right. So let me uh, let me let me hold on. Let me let me go um, ahead and let me go ahead and uh, stop my share. And now you on your end. Yep. Got uh, it. Yeah. So now you could go ahead and share it. Ah, here was the case. Okay. Um, so this was a, a good case for it because what I was doing was watching a folder and, and calling a function uh, on a uh, uh, folder path. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, but the the action is numeric, so I have one value and it's an easy test. Right. Okay. For each one. Right. right okay. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I, I haven't filled out actions for other stuff, but you get the idea. Right, of course. And actually, so, the index is just one number or, you know, something like... Right. I, I, I mean, uh, I, I could have I uh, done, done it a whole lot of different ways, uh, obviously, but it was, this is an example of where it makes a lot of sense Yes, uh, to use a, a switch case. But, but um, that is when you know the values that are going to come out, you know, so when you have... Static values, right? I, I, I guess that's the unspoken statement here is right. I know what the values are. It doesn't, I, I, I would never uh, be a go-to on switch where uh, I have to evaluate. Anything, right? I, I, get, that's that's what I was feeling, right? So when I was, when I was doing the cases, I was like, hold on, but I'm, I'm actually evaluating stuff here. Like, for example, whether it contains something, if it has a percent sign, if it does, but in any case, yeah, that doesn't make much sense there, right? Right, right, right. No, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, there was someplace else. What the hell? Ah, here was another one. Um, so I wrote a hot stream. Uh, here, this, this might be yep, fun to watch. So, so what this does here is uh, 
I'm, I'm creating a new uh, um, right function, now, right? A uh, new uh, class. Uh, so it auto generates me a basic class. So you see it generated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I used a hot string for <laughs> creating a new. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Now that is interesting. Um, so, so that's an example where I'm using switch, but there again, I, I know the values that I'm looking for. Exactly. I think that's the, I would, I would say, I would uh, go ahead and say that that's the rule. If you know what the values, the end values are going to be, probably it is best to use a switch case because it is going to be easier to read. Now, if you're deriving kind of like information from the from the variable, then an if statement is actually better or probably the same because you're der deriving stuff anyways, right? So it doesn't matter. But I think the case is only for when you know the, uh, the result values because it would be clearer. It makes everything way more readable, actually. Yeah. Um, so uh, it, it does matter. It, it, it's a big deal. Uh, to know that. Um, now, all of that being said, there's another approach. Uh, I, I mean, you could, uh, you know, write an is DLL is script path function, blah, 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 and have those be the comparison operators for each case and still make it very readable um, and, and kind of abstract the actual uh, Checking uh, comparison of it. Comparisons out of the case statement. But I mean, I, it's kind of a six of one and half a dozen of another. Yeah, exactly. Right. Because you, yeah, you're, you're doing the same thing, but in a, in a different location. Uh, but again, now, now here's one of the things that I do say, like readability is uh, something for me that is paramount, which means that even if I have to do a little bit more work, which I do all the time, Having the readability, right, is better because later on when somebody else grabs my code, they can actually go ahead and modify it or fix it or uh, uh, um, extend it. That is in the case that my code is actually intended to be, you know, up there. Because if it is something that I need to obfuscate, that would be different, right? <laughs> then readability right. would not be the good thing, right? But in any case, uh, I think that I would use is when I want the readability to be kind of like paramount. And that is kind of like, you see, right there, um, I wouldn't necessarily see the difference between an if statement, right? If else, that's, it, it might be the same. So Yeah, it, it, it's really, uh, it, it really boils down to uh, uh, preference. I think code style, um, right. really. Um, you know, uh, I have I have been a fan of the switch language uh, type of features, uh, right? Yeah. In in every language I've learned since the the first coding I ever did, but <laughs> um, because there there's there's something that registers in my mind when I'm going through and reading code where I see case, 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 right? Yeah. Um, but, you know, the, how is, the, the real question is, you know. How is that uh, different from if? Right, I mean, how is, how is this really any, any different. I can just put a comment that says the same thing and triggers the same thought process. Um, but so, so it's really boils down to coding, coding style. Uh, right, you know, I, I, I used to, I used to see all of the rants that yeah, I don't know if you've ever looked through all of the rants about switch in the old forum. Oh no, I haven't. <laughs> uh, but, uh, I used to read through them and, and was like, 
Jesus Christ, guys, you act like it cripples you not to have a switch stick. Right, exactly. <laughs> There's some people like, why can't you play, for example, I, I, I'm testing a little bit a version two of Auto Hotkey, right? And you know that in AutoHotkey 2, you don't have the new, uh, the new operator for, um, for assigning objects. So if you're going to use an object, you don't have to say new and the object name anymore. You have to use it as a function. It's so bizarre. Like, to me, it's so weird. So let me, let me, can I, can I, so can I'm, I? Yeah, no, 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 go, go right ahead. Uh, um. So, so basically, now the new, the new. So you remember that you have like um, new my object, and actually you're using it, you know, like this. You, you can do that, right? Or uh, my object like this as well, right? So you could do that. In version two, it's not like that. You would have to necessarily say my object, like this. It has to be like that, even if it is a class or an object. So if you create your own class, right? No, say, no, I, 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 get, I get it. Here, here's the thing. Now, now my question, my, my annoyance with it is that now you don't know if that is a function or if it is a class. Exactly. I'll be like, how do you know if that is a function or a class? You have no idea. That's for me, that's I mean, a function. I mean, if we're not going to do some sort of create object language or, no, no. They, they, or, they, they, or, or, or newing it up as no, the no, 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 like no. to say. Uh, like then, there's no way for you to know. And actually the same, like for using a function, you know that you could just say like my, my object, right? And, and my function, and that would call the function with the new parameters and stuff, right? That's okay, I get it. But here's the funny thing. Uh, what happens when you, because now all the functions, all the functions, now they have a variable, a global variable. So you see the main function, which is a function, the minimum. Mm. So now you cannot ever do min equals 10, max equals 100. Because those two are now keywords that are for functions, built-in functions. And I'm like, what? what? <laughs> that, that's just stupid. You know, like, uh, you know, the built-in function and a variable are two different separate things. But now version two has them all mixed up. They're the same thing. And, and, they, and the syntax is such that, uh, you know, if, so are you saying that function calls don't recognize don't require parentheses? No, they don't. Oh, that's a very VB like. Right. So now so you, can, stupid. you can use it, but you can say message box, this is my text, and then goes the title, and then goes the options. That's something that you can do. And I find yeah. that so irritating. It, it's it's really I mean it, it pisses me. We don't need VBs, you know, a thirty five, almost forty year old language. So, so, so basically, I, I was. We don't need I, to inherit those. I I, I I I I did not use auto it because it looks like Visual Basic and you know those old yeah. crappy languages. Now I understand that commands. Okay, fine, but now. Any, I don't even yeah. understand the argument. No, at no, all. I, I, I've read I get it, it, and I'm like, no, I, I get it. If you if you are used to commands and stuff, okay, I get it. I, I I I don't. I will not fight with you about that one. But dude, my personal function, and then you pass the parameters like twelve, thirteen, twenty four. How do I know that that's a function? That's not a function, and I don't know that is declared anywhere. It looks like something built in into the language. You know, the, the one quick thing that I have about commands is that if it is a command, I know that it's built in into the language. And if it is a function, then you would have to write it like this, and I know that it is because you wrote it. 
Right. You know, I, I, I'm glad you just did that comparison because now right. I understand why Steve's doing it. I understand that. But if it is a personal function, but you cannot pass the, you, 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 you can omit the, 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 the parentheses. Yeah, I, I, then I, I say like, I don't know. I don't know which one is which one. I cannot know which one is from the language, which one is a personal function. Do I have to look for the definition? I, am I going to find the definition? No way well, for you to tell. So I, I understand now why he did it, uh, but it's the wrong answer. And uh, I think it is the wrong answer. So, I, I mean, he's trying to appease the, the uh, command syntax. I understand. So some these. people, yeah, I understand those guys. I don't use them. I would rather use my functions all the time and that's it. But now, now, now I'm going to show you what they are doing all the time, which I hate. Now, you know that you have... Uh, you know that some parameters are option. Now check this one out. You can actually just omit the goddamn thing like that, and you don't know that there was a parameter there. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Um, that, so, that's that's, so, that's, so that's this, just bad. This leads me to something I went on to a rant about some years ago. Uh, uh, I said my piece and I left it alone, but. <laughs> You know, I, and, and I heard the whole argument about making it easy for noobs to learn and stuff, but it's bullshit. It is. Um, I don't, I don't, uh, I, 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 my, my argument is, um, is countered with the word Python. Um, but oh, this, fuck this, Python. <laughs> amb this ambiguity, <laughs> this, this, this ridiculous amount of ambiguity built into how we write statements. Yeah, is the source of more confusion and more bugs than anything else. No, in, in my case, uh, when somebody tells me, no, it is better for noobs, I'm going to tell you, if you're a noob and you have never programmed in your life, whatever you learned the first is going to be whatever you learned the first. So it doesn't matter if it's difficult or hard or simple, it's going to be the first thing you learned, right? That's it exactly right. That's that, it doesn't exactly matter. Right. And if you tell me, if you tell me that when I write an if statement, I always need to do this, I will always do it. Right. And, and, and then when I go to another language, then I'm going to find out that in that language is similar. That's good. If, if you tell me a string always has to be quoted, then it will be. That's it. Exactly. That's it. I don't. I don't need to know which cases they need to be no, quoted I, and which that's, ones that's not. That's the I don't, one thing. <laughs> that's right. Don't, right. Don't don't fucking do it. I understand. You and I agree on that one. Like for example, yeah, the one thing that I do not like about uh, out of hot keys, this ambiguity. I, I was just right now, like a few minutes ago, talking to Joe about this, like the send message, right? So the message can be an expression so you can use a function there the mm -hmm. parameter uh, sorry the, the 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 message can be an expression the these two can be another expression expression now for some reason you have to force an expression here to use the function why because that doesn't expect and this one e either so now you have to force expressions. Now the first three, you can use them without the parentheses and uh, without the percent sign. So you, <laughs> they are by default expressions, but in the and middle they, of the command, then you have to force expressions because that's not an expression. And I'm like, what? Who, who thought that that was a very good idea? Well, because that was originally the way Ottawa was done too. Yeah, and then they're gonna say like, no, uh, Auto hotkey is easy for noobs. No, it's not. It's extremely confusing. It's, it's easy for noobs in that the documentation is better and easier to sort. The one than... thing, you know what? That's the one little thing, the one little detail. The documentation for auto hotkey is extremely good. I can agree with that. For example, I decided to learn a little bit of C sharp, but going through that documentation, my friend, that's hell. Like what? <laughs> really? Nah, 
No, thank you. Well, why do we need 15 different versions of a string? <laughs> um, <Right. laughs> no, but in, no. in general, I think I think I understand now how uh, the switch case, what, what, what would you use it on? It is just for cases where you know exactly what the result is going to be. So you just want to get, get each of the results that you're going to get. If you're going to be deriving stuff, then it doesn't matter. And I wouldn't use it there anyway. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, it, it really does boil down to uh, what's the most uh, convenient for the developer to use. Uh, but I think from a readability standpoint, it makes more sense to always have known values or at least a clean, simple function call to make there. You know, um, is object, is number, is whatever, whatever it may be, but um, <laughs> because otherwise it just turns into trash. I mean, at the end of the day, this was a funny little debate some years ago is, uh, you know, why doesn't everyone do, uh, you know, something like this? Wait for it. Oh my God. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right. Because we could, we could, we could, we we can. everything to ternary operations and in one line, like work. in one line, right. <laughs> and, and it would work just fine. But, you know, at some point, there's, there's, you know, an argument about um, um, readability that, that is, is pretty pretty legit and at the same time you know I, I i get so pissed off about the arguments about this and and oh they uh, removed they removed goes up yeah uh, I, I i get i get so irritated about that argument about how it makes it spaghetti code because that's really um it isn't it, and actually it, it, you know what it's really no different than just doing this I mean, uh, somewhere. I, I mean, come on. Only the, the benefit of go to is then I get a fall through. Right, and exactly. If right. there's no return, it does, you know, or, or even if there is, right? right? Whereas go sub comes back, go to doesn't. And, and I have this new kind of functionality that uh, exists it is just, in a it's lot just of languages. People, for it's a just right. It, it is just people just uh, bitching about it. It doesn't matter uh, if you if you don't use stupid things because you can do stupid things with functions anyway. So people uh, that I say mean, like, yeah, I, I I don't use go to because it would make it so unreadable. Yeah, you can do the same with functions. <laughs> you can do you can do any number of stupid ass things with any <laughs> right, yeah. language. Right. And it is not it is not about that. You should not be trying to solve these problems for developers with uh no, the developer uh, limited, is the one who has to right no no no, no. With, with limitations to uh, uh what they can do and th what they cannot do. Right, exactly. So so again, I think it boils down to whatever uh, that's why I'm actually happy about the inclusion of the switch command and the if and else statements because then I have options, right? Now, what I, won't, I, what I don't like is when they take away options. Now you cannot use this. Now you cannot use that. No, man, give more options, right? Because if I like it a specific way, if it doesn't change, if it is performance issues, I would understand, right? But if it, it doesn't make any difference in performance, it makes the sense, then why would you remove it? What is the difference between a go sub and a go to? Why would you remove go sub? Just to, piece, to to make a bunch of script not not work any longer because they, they were using goes up. That's the only thing that you're going to accomplish with that. I, I, and yet this seems Set to timer. be a recommended good idea. And, and, and it's the same. It's like the same thing. <laughs> So I don't know. They make they make this <laughs> weird 
<laughs> weird statements of what is better and worse, yet that's the same exact thing. That is going to go to a label or function somewhere that you don't have an issue. Now, here, I'm going to tell you something. One quick thing that I would say about it is that is because people are not using, um, how do I say, modern tools. Why? Because now it doesn't matter where I am. I just select that, hit F12, and it takes me there, right? Now, it doesn't matter if it is a label. It doesn't matter if it is a function. It will take me to wherever location that is. Even if it is in a different file, that is a modern tool for you. So if you're complaining about GoTo and GoSub, it's because you're using Notepad++ or Notepad or something like that. And you don't have an outline that you could actually just go ahead and search through, like tells you all the freaking objects and functions that you have. You see, that's your fault. That's not my fault. <laughs> so again, uh, I. I these 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 people complaining about things like that the go to the go sub that it doesn't matter the go to doesn't matter if you just hit f12 and it takes you there they're, they're just such idiotic arguments that they distract from real things like um one thing that hinders adoption in the corporate world is there's no way for IT management to enable or disable functionality based on, say, um, uh, yeah, like their policies. Membership, membership to a security group. Right. Um, th there are, uh, which I would have, I, I would, I, I would and have argued that that's the wrong approach anyway, because all it is is wrapping APIs that you should be in control of anyway as an right, IT course. manager. Um, but then there's, then there's really, you know, a, a, and then we fight for the stupidest things about like, does an if statement need parentheses? Do I have to wrap a string in an if statement with a quotation marks? Well, what if there is a logical operator, then I have to wrap it in quotation marks or, you know, I, I mean, it just, it goes Doesn't on, matter. on stupid things that don't matter, but we're worried about go subs and uh, <laughs> whether right. or not commands exist. And no, 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 no. So, so for me, uh, I I don't know if you have noticed. Like, I, I don't go in the uh, in the forums that often to argue with people about things like, uh, but. I would tell you something. I, I, I find that whatever Lexicos is doing right now, which is great, he's coding, right? Something that this project would be completely dead if nobody was actively doing something about it. But people then, uh, the, the way how he's doing it, he's just, okay, I'm gonna rewrite this thing, right? Okay, fine. And I'm gonna rewrite it that looks very similar to JavaScript, but I'm also going to make it very similar to VBScript. Okay, those two things are exclusive. You know that, right? So those two things are exclusive, or it and looks like buggy, one language, right? <laughs> and buggy beyond reason. <laughs> it does, I, does, does. <laughs> and I'm, I'm like, no, just I, just get what decide one or another, and then just go with it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting for arrow function. He yeah, has them already. So, so what arrow you functions. But hold you on, put yes. arrow functions in two, and in version one as well. Arrow functions. In our HTML, yes, you can. You can use, you can use fat arrow functions. Yeah. Where? Where is this? No, 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 no. But hold on. I, so, so for example, fat arrow. I remember, and I, I, am, I have been using it. I actually do it in classes myself. So what I don't know is if, if there is like using expressions. No, hold on. Expressions. Where, where are the expressions? And, and it has like expression operators. Where are the, the operators? So let's see. 
No, 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 no. He had the fat arrow. Let me just one second. Let me go ahead and see if it, if in version two it has it explicitly because I I hold on let me see hold on I don't have key that um, yeah there it is so let's go to I'm sorry so then go we ahead. have no, no, other hot key so no, I just wanted to go to other hot key .com. no you don't. <laughs> that my nukes, that guy. Long time didn't hear his name. Eh? So version two, you totally have that arrow functions. They are there. And actually in version one as well. But in version one, it's not like the whole thing, but yeah, you can do uh like specific situations, like for example, when you're declaring uh uh uh, how do I say, um, a get and set and there are certain situations in which you can use an arrow function in version one. I have seen that now. Uh, I, 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 I got to see that. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see. Let me see if I can give you an example. <laughs> let me see. Because it breaks something. What what breaks? Um, well, even though what's on the screen right there is a horrible example of it, but what if I want to know if A is equal to or greater than A times 2? Uh, well, I don't and I, wa I want to know if that's true or false. Right. <laughs> that would be a problem. <laughs> It does. It does. It, it should break right there. But I. Oh do... wait! No! 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 I see why it doesn't. Because the, in that case, the parentheses uh, be the, in front of no, it. No. No. The equal goes after the greater than. In right. That comparison. Okay. No, no. 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 I see why it doesn't. Right. Anyway. <laughs> but in general, you know. That's just, that's just going to be confusing for the so-called noobs too, though. Yeah, so they, they and, and and what do we need arrow functions for? Uh, oh, well, like, what can I tell you? Uh, they I mean, it pissed me very, off. It, it, it's, it's, just, just, it's just for making it like, oh, I, I would tell you where they use it very often. Like when you're doing, um, uh, how do I say this? Uh, static declaration of objects, right? So you have a literal object. And one of the values of the object, or one of the keys of the object, is actually a function that's going to be returned. So it's going to be a, 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 an evaluation like that. But I don't know why would you use it in the first place, but yeah. The, yeah. Only, the only reason it made it into ECMAS 6 was because of the prolific abuse and use of something that should have never existed in the first place, which was anonymous functions. Anonymous functions, which I hate. Oh my god, functions that you that you are like, uh, you don't even know. <laughs> um, and and so uh, because people wrote code so bad in JavaScript, and it was just so they just accepted it so much that they molded the language to support mo more bad coding practices. Right. And here they are used to define single line methods. That's what they're uh, doing. Like, I would understand I, that. I, I, no, no, I, I get it. It's just both unnecessary and stupid. <laughs> yeah. It's just um, for single lining, single lining stuff. That's all there is to it. So this is what you do for a method. Oh, I don't want to put braces and I don't want to have a new line because I'm just going to return a value five. So I just want to do it in one line. That, that, that's what it is all about. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, so, so it's, it's just more bad coding because the more junk I pile into the one line, the harder it is to read. Yeah. It. So look at it. Yeah. So here, 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 that, that the get and set. 
even even worse. Yeah, for getters, for setters and getters as well. So you can use it for anything. It's just the fact that just to make you, uh, yeah, cringe a little bit every every single time. So again, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, it, it, it's it's as it's as dumb as the uh, use of a comma to separate. Com uh, commands and functions instead of wrapping multiple statements in a, uh, in parentheses. It just makes it really fucking harder to read. Right, it That's is. all it, it does. Uh, and, and on top of that, building on what you were describing earlier, let's say I have a command or a function, a custom function, and, yeah. the, commas, and the commas just keep coming, but I can't tell where I've switched to new statements at. Right. Yeah. You, you just don't know. Right. So that's the thing that that it, I do not like the the fact that there is no way for you to tell certain things. So you go you you have your message box here. Now, the only way for you to know that is now this one has four parameters. So you you would say like uh, my options would be about again, they, they switched the parameter so this is the yeah, text yeah, yeah. so they switch that i do like the fact that you don't have to use the comma on the first one that's okay i get it text uh title right now my options now my uh, uh timeout which is five now my personal function all right maybe i'm gonna which set a, which set a goes, variable there 25, which actually has an, a, a new function, a, uh, a loop field, right? And then, you know, some text. I what really, I want this that method mean? box function with 25 different variables or, or, or parameters, rather. Yeah, like there's nothing stopping you from doing that, like at all. And you would not know when the, the command finished and when the other one started. Why? Because you should have some parentheses here, like this. That's all. It is, it is the one thing. I, I don't get me wrong. I, I'm not actually a fan of Python, but the one thing I do appreciate about it is the absolute strict, unrelenting nature, nature of how it's written. You just can't get away with slot. So it's the one thing I appreciate about it, but at the same time, sure, does it does it mean that you have to actually know what you're doing before you write a line of code? Yeah, maybe it you does. should. Maybe you should. <laughs> maybe you should know, right? <laughs> yeah, but in general, uh, you know, when you, uh, I, I do not know if this would work, but. Well, I can try it. Now, you know, I have this little thing here that I can try it right now. Um, if you highlight it, and uh, yeah, run but it, it runs it separately, just what you have selected. No, but the funny thing is that, um, let me just one second. Uh, Oh, that was the live code. I, I, I get it. But why did it get that? Oh, okay. Um, oh, I know what it is. I get it. There's a clipboard thing in there. So, um, no, what, what happens is that I have a, a script that I could grab text and run it with different versions of auto hotkey, right? So, ah, right now, if okay. you run it right now, it's going to be version one. But in, in, in my case, I wanted to, to run it with version two. So let me go ahead and just type it. Message box, text, uh, title, right? I have 0, 010. And now one, and then my function, 25, 25, some text. So let me show you, let me just go ahead and show my screen. Right, so this would be the thing and I would just change it. You would just switch it to different 
uh, auto hotkey versions for me to just go ahead and um, test stuff in different languages, right? So uh, now I would have to define my function. And it would have two, three parameters. Uh, one, two, three. And it would just go ahead and message box. Let's oh, why not just go ahead and arrow function the damn thing for <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Actually, you can. So you could just go ahead and do this and message box. Oh, my God. Yeah. Message box. <laughs> uh, but, this is what that, this is what the use case would be. Like, I don't want to write a lot of code, so let me just put them all to. Oh shoot, I have to fix that real quick. Um, great. So that's supposedly what you could do with it. I have never. Where's done your it. commas? You don't need a comma because I want all of that in one message box. So that's uh, the first parameter, right? So that would be the first parameter. <laughs> I'm telling you. Uh, uh, version two is going to be very fun to read. <laughs> uh, no, it's not. I'm not going to bother. <laughs> I'm not going to bother until it actually solves the problem. <sighs> Let me see. So it says too many parameters passed to the function. You might have to yes. do two, two commas or something. No, 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 no. So even though I, I put in, so I cannot, I cannot explicitly put two, uh, implicitly put two things if I don't have the percent signs around it. Again, too many parameters. Where? Dude, but I have, hold on, I have, oh, wow, what is that? Hold on, let me see. Did they break that functionality in uh, two? No, no, hold on. Oh, that it, the, the timeout, I'm sorry. They removed the timeout, I think it is. What? This line will never execute. I don't care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is working. Title test. So they don't have a fourth parameter anyways. So uh, warn off, I think it is. Warn all off. No, it's more bullshit even that. Yeah, that'll okay. work. That should work. Let me see. Expect string, but got a function. Where did I? Message box. Right, but hold on. So this guy is expecting a string? What? Probably the arrow. I, I do not understand the arrow function myself, but let me try this. Because that shouldn't. Right, okay, fine. Now, the arrow function is there, and it is expecting a string. I don't know why. Why a string? I know that it's not a string. I could actually pass. For example, five plus five. So I could pass something like that. No, it's, that, it's, only, that. it's only some kinds of expressions. Seems like, I'm not sure. Let me see, hold on. All right, yeah, that works. That should return five plus five. So what they are saying is like, if you use it as a command like this, then you're discarding the, the returning value. Now, if you need the returning value, then you would have to call it as a function, and then you would be able to use the returning value of it. So I, that's how they say it, right? So if you don't use the the if you don't use the per, the parentheses, then you're discarding whatever you have there. So are you sure? Work, Put the message yeah. box in front of it. I'm no, 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 well, no. discarding in, the in value, front, right? In so front of my function. No, 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 no. Leave that there. And do the message box in front of my function. Just message box. In here? No, don't, don't do that. No, 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 no. Okay, so just. In front of my function. Oh, in front of. Okay, here. No, 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 no. On line four. Okay, message box like that. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, okay, let's see. Yeah. It yeah. expects this a string, but got a function. Oh, uh, put a percent in front of it. No, no, you can't. Um, oh, is it? We it is in, in no, 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 two. no, no. In version two, you you cannot do that. You cannot force expressions any longer. Uh, it is a, it is an expression well, already. Now, now I, I do like that. I, I do like that. Right, right. Me too. I don't like um, this forcing expression thing. It is an expression all the time, but it seems to me that it is expecting a string, 
but it is getting a function instead. No, message box is expecting a string. Right, right. So message box is expecting a string right here. Wrap it in parentheses. So as this function right now is not, you see this five plus five is not returning to the message box. No, no, no. I, I know. Wrap, wrap message box, uh, the my function in a in parentheses so that message box is a function call instead. Right. So let's go ahead and do that. Let me just get rid of that. Like this is what you mean. That yeah. is not going to return the string. That's what happens. It's empty. Uh, right you here. called it without parameters. Right. Put the oh. parameters in. Oh, okay. Hold on. There we go. Yeah, it's not going to work. Uh, and if you wrap the parameters in parentheses, I'm just curious now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know. Oh, that worked. Yeah. Okay. Now, now it is because you're using the uh, parentheses that returns the value. Now, if you don't have the values, the parentheses, then it's gonna be blank because it discards the freaking thing. It just simply doesn't. Yeah, it's not gonna return anything. Just yeah. now, let yeah. me go ahead and ver verify something. Hold on. And by the way, the equal sign is gone. You cannot use it by itself. If you're going to be assigning something, it has to be that one. That's the only one that is in there. I, I actually agree with that. That's a yeah, level of too. that should have always occurred. Right. So there we go. So now the parameters are, uh, you know. Um, yeah, but if you had empty parentheses, I'm sure it would still return this in. You think? Yeah. No, because, yeah, it's what I'm saying. Like, the parentheses tell it to return the value. If you don't use the parentheses, that value is going to be discarded, even though it is returning it, but it is discarded by the script. So that's well, the distinction. That's uh, the distinction between command call and uh, function call. If it is a command call, the command that you're calling does not have a return value. If you want a return value, you have to call it with a parentheses. That's what it is saying. Okay. Yeah, it um, is kind of like, yeah, okay, you do whatever, you do you. The, the, my, my point stands, though, that it just adds a level, an unnecessary comple uh, complexity that is going to do nothing except generate extra help. Well, uh, for me, it, 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 again, you see how you started kind of like understanding the people with the commands? I know why. Because, for example, you see this message box command? Mm-hmm. I don't expect a return value. What I expect is an action. Okay, I see something happening, right? I don't need any values from it. So it doesn't make sense for me to capture anything in a variable here, like var from, from a message box call, right? So whenever you call a command like this, you're not expecting any values. You're expecting an action. Now, if I want a value, then I would call a function. So now my function is returning something, and for it, I need the parenthesis. I get the idea. Now, if I call it like that, I will not get any values. Why? Because it is a command. It's just an action. Now, that makes it so that function is double, it's a double-edged sword. But anyways, yeah, no, I understand no, why. No, no, no. I, I, I'm actually less complaining about the, uh, the function call right. syntax and more about the arrow function. Oh, right. <laughs> this thing. <laughs> well, it's just one-liners, man. So they, 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 the only thing is that they want to have, like, many, many things like this, like, you know, five plus ten, you know. And you can have, like, ten functions defined in ten different lines without having to put the, the brackets for one line. There's an easier solution to that. Just do what PHP does and let the closing parentheses be on the same line. Because you can put the opening one on the same line. So you would do like, like, oh, you mean like just having the, the, yeah. Like this. Right. Yeah. 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 And the only reason you can't do it in auto hotkey is because the closing parentheses can't be on the same line. 
Uh, you mean the closing bracket here? Yeah. Or, yeah, the closing bracket. Hmm. That's the only reason it won't work. I think, I think, I think, I think, I think you can. Hold on. Now you can. Maybe. Return. Yeah, I think you can. I remember seeing something like this. Now, so my function, and if I call it, See, expected, uh, unexpected opening there. Okay, it, it, this is what you cannot have in the same line now. What? Hold Why on. would that? Yeah, that doesn't even make sense. Yeah, I that mean, doesn't make sense. No, that, what? Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah. That's weird. Where, but Whereas the whole one line thing, argument, got resolved uh, more maturely and more readably. Yeah. Other languages. It. Why? 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 I think it, it has to do with the with the popularity of something. So if something got very popular, like the fat arrow functions got so popular, those are, you you have to realize those are right. only going to be JavaScript coders who have only started learning JavaScript within the past three years. <laughs> But I that's mean, that's thing. really got to be a limited subset. Uh, I'm not really sure about that one, though. But because it has become such... Um, the JavaScript has such a low entry uh, thing. Everybody knows JavaScript right now. Like right. Everybody. But, but all of the people who did JavaScript before ECMA 6 was formally released, wouldn't even dream of doing it. No, exactly. No, no, no. That, that is not something that was there. But the problem is that it is such, and, and, I, I, and I would tell you something, like from my perspective, even though I wouldn't use this, up right now I wouldn't use it, and, and I wouldn't use it in the context that people use them. Like right in the middle of something that they're doing, they right, ne right there define a function, which is, dude, why would you define a function right there? They would do something like this. Which even doesn't make any sense to me. Like, what would you do that? Like, in the middle of a call, you go ahead and define a very function, and they would define the whole function in it, right? But as it is such a popular thing, your language should at least have some basic support for it because people are going to come looking for it. That's what happens. Um, I wouldn't go chasing every single uh, new bad that comes in but there's some things that become such a such ubiquitous that you would say like no nah, you know i have uh, to I, have it. I i disagree with the ubiquity of it but here's I, i'm still back at the whole problem of um uh so i understand that there are a lot of people making a lot of noise about it uh i i would argue and i probably could prove with a little research that it's a small percentage overall but uh, aside from that, um, uh, aside from that, Lexicos has on Jesus so many occasions uh, harped about not wanting to mimic other languages. I'm gonna tell you. So, so, so let me tell you where I would agree with having the fat arrow function. Now that I. Look at it. Okay, no, no, hold on. Before you do that, I, uh -huh. I want you to think about the guy who's learned how to write a function. It's the mm -hmm. first thing he's ever done, mm -hmm. and he's reading somebody else's code and sees it. Right. So here's the thing. I see this guy. This, for me, is a lot of space that is wasted. See all of that? Now, for me, what I wasted? do is that, in, in this case, let me show you again. So I have kind of like this little thing. Let me just one second, select the language, or hotkey, that I say quick menu. And it creates kind of like a menu for me that has some very specific things that I like. And now for each of the functions, this one in itself, I have to do this three lines. For something that in version two, I would assume I can put it like this. 
and it is just as readable. And I know that, okay, I could just convert this to this, right? And this one, I would have it to that. I don't Except know if now, as a noob, I have to learn all of the nuances that you and I just went over about arrow scripts. Uh, I mean, I like some things work, some others don't. Like, yeah, I get that. So, for example, and, if and I so have now this, you've just forced this noob coming to our language to have to learn a level of complexity that's both unnecessary and doesn't actually help anyone except perhaps an experienced coder. Now, I'm going to tell you something. And this is the first thing we talked about at the beginning of when we started talking, like, if I'm completely new to programming in general, I'm blank in here. I see this, I learned this, and that's that. Now, I, I see the issue. You know who I see the issue with? People who already know how something works, and now they have to learn a new way for that same thing working. They would have a problem because I would say like, but I'm used to doing it some way and now I have to learn this new way. That I understand. But for but, a person who oh, is- you're, you're, you're totally, totally missing my point. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. The, the draw of, of auto hotkey is not for programmers or people who want to learn code or um, uh, how memory spaces of classes versus functions work. It mm -hmm. is for people who want to learn as little as possible to get something done. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. When we introduce something with a lot of nuance to it, like arrow, this functions, one has yeah, this one has nuances. Right? Yeah. Actively, we are in active combat with that whole preset. I, I do, I would have to agree that there are some nuances to this that I couldn't have uh, seen because I would assume that this would work just fine. So I cannot use the word reload, but I could, yeah, I can. So, but let me go ahead and change it just in case. Test, and I would say like test return. So that I would assume that if I'm running version two that that should give me a message box, right? Now, uh, this is a warning, but then it gives something else. No, hold on, let me, let me, let me, warn all of, right? So now, if I'm a noob, and in this case, I am a noob on this topic of flat arrows, I have never done them. I would assume- But these don't even work like they do in ECMA. Uh, in what? In ECMA. The, the no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. So the JavaScript, you didn't, you didn't see it. Like now, so there, so here, there is no chance of familiarity saving you. So, 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 I, so I'm, I'm like looking at it and I say like, okay, they told me, they told me, they just said that, that I could in one line use an expression, right? So in that expression, I could call a function. And in version two, I can call a function without the parenthesis, right? So this is an accessible expression. If I call it, I should get that, right? So why do I get this? Um, return, test, return. Yeah, so the return parameter, so that fat arrow creates a return, a hidden return that I'm not seeing, right? And that hidden parameter is expecting a, a string? Are you expecting a string there? So that, that would confuse the hell out of me. And I, I'm actually kind of like, why doesn't that work? Like, I, I'm actively thinking, why doesn't that work? Like, and I wouldn't figure it out. <laughs> so, so I wouldn't figure that one out uh, at all. And probably fat arrow. For, oh, well, this is version one, so I cannot see that there. But even in the fat arrow, sub expressions returns the result. I would assume that, well, maybe, maybe if I put a variable here, maybe that works. 
No, uh -huh. no, you, no, because message box doesn't return a value. Right, that's the thing. So, but look at that. Just by just by grabbing the percentages, right? Okay, so that works. But that's a very strange thing. If yeah. so, for example, this message box works up here, right? I know that that works. Why doesn't it work down here? That is something that would throw me off completely. Right, and then and then you're going to sit here and you're going to go back to the uh, the normal way of writing a function and see that right. it still works. <laughs> because you think be it like, doesn't work. So why would I ever use this this broken ass thing? Right. That. So so just because it didn't have the parentheses, that's the thing that is actually right. kind of like what? Right. Why? <laughs> Those are the right. tiny little details that make you go like, why would I? Why? Why? Then why? just force parameter, force per, uh, parentheses all the time, and get done with it. You don't have that issue anymore. I, I made that argument. I made that argument, and then I left it alone. <laughs> Yeah, because uh, why, why, why do we insist on not quoting strings and not always evaluating everything as an expression? Right. They, they in version two, that's gone. Like now, everything is a, is is a is an expression. That's everything not true. Should... We just proved that. Uh, well, it's true. <laughs> just just by the fact that it doesn't have the parentheses, and then that is not an expression anymore. That's funny. Actually, I will I will actually post this. I will comment it. So this is something that I will I will I will actually post. And the the funny thing is that then this, if I have it in a normal definition, it works. Right. So works this, just this, fine. That this should work just fine. Yeah. So that is. Incredibly stupid. <laughs> that is actually stupid. And, and, and again, and, and we're going to see noobs who see this in code, and and even if they're not too lazy to learn about it, they're going to get so frustrated and generate it is so many bugs because it is they don't understand what. Because they're not willing to do what you and I are do, willing to do. Right, exactly. Programmers. Because we're, we're, we're just we're, we're just is, testing different situations and stuff. Which but, is trial yeah. and error. They're not willing to do that. That's the difference between the typical visitor to AutoHotKey. Now, you know what? I think the offender there is the return keyword. Because this guy supposedly expects an expression, right? But when it gives me the error, it is telling me that that is expecting a string. There, and it is the return here. You see, so is, there's a return with the message box and that is expecting a string. And, and Why if it expects an expression? That's, so, that, that's a bug. And, and, and But that's what I'm saying. All we're doing by generating all of these special nuances is generating more bugs to manage, both from our users and for lexicons. Yeah. Um, there's, there's a serious argument that has got to be made for simplicity. Yeah. Yeah, I so agree long with as that. it does not hinder function. And if we're going to show a way to write a function but we want to support one-liners, then support the same function set syntax right. I would, and just I would say, allow I would it to say, be done yeah, on so one line. In one line, yeah. So basically, this allow me to just do this. Uh, just go ahead and do this and then yeah. be done with it. Yeah, and I agree with that. Same re you have the result you're looking for without screwing up the, the lesson of how to write a function to the new right. user. I do agree with you there. If we are already teaching one method, then use that same method Implicit. as a one-liner. Right. Keep it simple. Right. Get it through. I agree completely on that. So instead of adding new ways of doing things, because for that matter, then just do this, and that, and it would just add something new to it. Right. Like, I right. don't need fifty ways of doing the same. Right. Thing. Exactly. I need. <laughs> I need one, maybe two, maybe three at most, and just call it done. There are some situations in which you need variety, but not always, right? right. I do agree with that. I mean, I agree if, with that. if we're gonna go this stupid, why not? Yeah, like just, just, just do that. Why not just 
to have DLLs automatically detect uh, parameter types instead of uh, oh my god, state them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Let's I mean, with that, yeah, I, I, can, I can make a million arguments for practicality, right? <laughs> things that matter. One of the things that's so confusing about DLL calls is having to figure out what kind of parameter it is. Especially when you don't know the other language, right? Is it an in or an out? Is it a B string? Is it an integer or a decimal or a float? One of the things that I, an you object know, it, or... right. You know, one of the things that I do not like when they do this is when they grab existing things and then change the meaning. So, what do you think this does? So you have DLL call, uh, you know, uh, uh, user thirty two dot DLL, whatever doesn't matter, and you have a pointer, and then you do this. What do you think that does? Well, I know what it's supposed to do in version one, but that's mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's the thing. So in version one, what do you think it does? Well, Perhaps it passes the address. Right. Now, in version two, this guy is no longer for addresses. This is for a special type of object that they created, which is called a var ref. So var reference, which is kind of like, I understand why he went that route, but hold that's on, a class. Let, let, me, let me read this. So this is a class, by the way. Is this a type of object now? It's an object. No, it, it's the same thing. It, it is actually the same you thing. You would think so. You would think so. But now, when you pass it to the DLL call, it's going to fail. Why? Because that is now an internal auto hot key object. Now you need to get a pointer. Let me see, string pointer. This is what you have to use now on the LL calls. Instead of actually using the address, you have to use a function that returns pointer. You, and this is just for to be passed indirectly to DLL calls and send message. You cannot use the, uh, the address that we were talking about. Just so you know. Okay. Well, all right. So, so the operator still does the same thing. They just broke it, it, the message and DLL. It, it does almost the same thing. It does basically the same thing, but now with a native auto hotkey object, which that object cannot be passed to DLLs or send messages. So now, if you really want to pass a true pointer, you would have to use this pointer function. This actually returns an integer, right? No, I, I, I get why I get why it's done. Uh, but again, the, the one annoying thing is the fact that now, if you already have an idea in your mind of how to do stuff, because I have many scripts that pass pointers to DLLs, right? But instead of, dude, if you want to do that, what you just did, or I don't know. Uh, all right. So don't so, break so, whatever it is working already. So so peep this. It, it didn't work already. It no. didn't work. It didn't work with auto hotkey defined class. Right now it didn't. Okay. And so the point here is that in breaking these, they require you to uh, as a programmer. Uh, use special syntax to refer to auto oh, hotkey defined things uh, objects because because unlike a variable when you pass an address it has a value there whereas yes. whereas when we do a dll call it probably wasn't written for the addressing scheme that is used in in auto uh, hotkey right in auto hotkey to define where parameters and functions exist. Right, and, and, and basically what happens is that now, whenever you use the reference operator, it, the object itself has a dot pointer thing. You can pass kind of like a, um, it has a, a new, uh, 
uh, as it is a class and uh, so, oh, I'm sorry. So now the reference operator, uh, yeah, it's kind of like, it is easier to read most of the auto hotkey stuff. Now, as soon as you're starting to work with external things like DLL calls, I understand that that would require different things. I get it, but I am a bit annoyed by the fact that um, now I have to use a whole function for it. Why don't I have like a short syntax for it as well? You know, kind of. Well, well, uh, I mean, that's like the undocumented feature of being able to read uh, a value that's in an address. I, I, I well, that's the thing. Did so, you know? Did you know that if I put a uh, star or, or an asterisk in front of a number, I'll just get what's at the address. <laughs> oh no, no way. So you say, oh yeah, well that's a problem, right? Yeah. So you can have like a uh, star. And then you have access to a specific memory location. Yeah, now it's one byte. Yeah. But... <laughs> well, I could use a loop function. You know, I could use a, a loop, sorry. Right, right. Go ahead and I mean... get a specific. As... <laughs> oh, my God. That's such a unity hole. <laughs> so, I, uh, I mean, there, 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 that's an undocumented thing. Um, yeah. And it's still there. I use it all the time. Right. No, that's the thing. So some people, they, they, they oh, my God. Yeah. Those are some, some of the things that, yeah, okay, I get it. But this is the thing. So the address and the reference, right? So those two guys have some kind of universal thing in all the freaking languages you work with, right? That's when you go ahead and try to change one of those makes it so difficult because people who come with any background will have an issue understanding what the hell is going on because they think they know, but later on, just as you said, like, yeah, I use something that is undocumented. Like somebody who sees the code, they think they're going to see something, but it is something else, right? So I get it. I do understand why using a string pointer, right? And that is only for pointers that point to a string specifically. So my bar, okay, I get it. But um, I think that worked just fine. So if you can make a, 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 an exception whenever you're calling the DLL call to just do whatever he was doing before, I don't mind, it doesn't matter. But having different ways of doing the things. Again, more options. Yeah, the, the amb ambiguity is- Ambiguity is, is what happens. So now I have been writing scripts for 10 years. Now, whenever I do a DLL call and I'm gonna pass a straight pointer, I'm gonna have a bug and I'm gonna have some unexpected behavior all the time until I get used to using a string pointer function, right? So mm -hmm. I get that. Yeah, and, and, and I'm, I'm notorious for mixing my versions of SQL. Ah, uh, you, you create your own versions. No, no, no. I, I, I mix syntax in my head between uh, uh, Microsoft see, SQL yeah, and yeah. Oracle and MySQL and right, Postgres. Um, and, That's and the so problem myself, when you know, yeah. Right? Because they're all SQL. And, right. And... and in their most basic statements, they all look and act the same. The but same. Like if I want to create a memory table, uh, am I using a hashtag or yeah. uh, you know? <laughs> it's very, uh, it's okay. very confusing. Now I do you know. want to ask you now that you're here, like just before you go, because I think we have been talking for a long time. I don't know if you have something else to do, you know. Um, but uh, do you know any greed? controls that are better than the least view control because the least view control I cannot set 
specific rows to different colors, for example. We were we were creating this little script. I don't know if you have seen it. Um, for scanning scripts. We basically, without knowing, created a small antivirus, kind of. It's not an antivirus, but basically, you just open a script with it. Oh, sorry. So you just open a script with it, right? And it would just read it and find specific instances of things that might be uh, funny, right? So why is this script actually making an, a request over the internet, right? And it would give you what the keyword is, what type it is, what kind of risk it is, and a context for you to take a look at it and see, oh no, it's not doing anything weird. So I know that it's creating an object there in line 96, so I would go to line 96 and take a look at it, right? Um, I, myself, I am very wary of scripts that go ahead and write directly to memory like this. But if I see the script and I know what it is, like, okay. Oh, by the way, it not only reads the main script, it goes ahead and loops over the included files to go ahead and take a look at them. Um, we created this kind of like uh, severity thing, which is just like things that you might want to take a look at. Like for example, for me, for me myself, anything that the script is actually installing without my knowledge, I want to know about it, right? So whatever use of the file install command, I would take a look at it. Um, anything that is writing or, or deleting from the registry, I would right away take a look at it. Any mentions of scripting languages outside of our hotkey, like the VB script, the, the type script and so on, I would take a look at it. HTTP request, I would take a look at it, right? So those kind of things like are important to me, I would take a look at them. Um, and as you notice, like we have to go with this little ugly ass icons, but just imagine if just the red ones, for example, these ones, the, the ones that I consider the most important ones, just the whole line make it red. Now the least view control, I don't remember, I don't think it supports having different um, lines colored differently or other controls inside themselves. So that's not possible, but yeah, I could go with the icon, but what if I wanted to put the icon in here? No, you have to put it at the beginning of it, I think. So there's no flexibility with the control itself. So I don't know if you know any other controls that I could use like to spice up this thing a little bit. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for something because I'm, I'm absolutely certain I've, been, I've done this exactly. Oh, really? Like this, the same script? Well, no, 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 no. I mean coloring lines. Okay. Oh, that's good. That would be good. It appears that background is the one thing that can't be changed. At I know. Level. Yeah, I know. Um, but I wonder uh, what you think about, uh, where is it? I was sure. that fonts were an option, but I'm, I'm somehow missing it. Um, but uh, in, in short, um, the, the There, there, these are my thoughts on the subject. So you could, uh, is your list sortable by clicking the headers? Yeah, it is. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, um, that, that sort of breaks my idea. No, because in general, um, you might want to take a look at uh, certain, you want to, might, might be want to sort by keyword, you might be uh, sort by severity, you might want to sort by the file. So I want to know the things on a specific file. So no, 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 no. My idea is broken by the fact that it's sortable. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. Um, all right, so that really, 
Mm -hmm. Oh my God, now that you're here, I actually. Mm. So I don't. Uh... All of all of the, the list view controls out there really kind of suck unless you want to go to an HTML GUI. Huh. Oh, uh, now if you go on that route, then I was gonna say like, you know, the one thing that I haven't really played with is when you uh, how do you make um, an HTML uh, button, for example execute out a hotkey code is that like for example so okay so so there, there's a couple of things to know mechanically about right uh, so um, that... the browser access to the local operating system okay and that number one when the source is local mm -hmm. um, it, it works uh, as though it's it is part of the operating system. So same permissions as the user. Okay. Um, it is it is when it is an external, an HTTP or an HTTPS source that there are limitations. So there is, uh, you know, a, a file system object uh, with an execute. Okay, hold on. But let me let me do this, the following. So before you go, because I am really interested in this, and um, in general, I. I haven't taken the time just because I'm doing other stuff, right? So, but now that you're here, just let me go through it very quickly. So, if I have HTML uh, doc type, so doc type, so that's doc. You know, type. you don't actually have to do any of that, right? Yeah, no, I know. But in general, I do it out of habit. So, okay. so I have this guy here. So let's say that I have, you know, my little guy just set up. And I have a button, right? And say, for example, I don't know. We're going to talk about the details later. But I have a button, right? And I use a GUI, add uh, HTML, right? Uh, would that be an HTML? No, uh, there is a different control. An ActiveX is it? ActiveX, yes. right? Yeah. And I would put a variable here, WB, for example. And uh, wb dot uh, write, I think, um, and I would write the HTML to it, HTML, which is not written here, HTML. And we show, for example, and this might be I don't know, like 800, 100. So I have this guy here. Let's see. Oh. Not good. Sorry, I switched screens here. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm just can't create the control. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. We had the uh, ActiveX or HTML. What was it? For what? Um, no, there's there's one control. For the, for no, the, I know, so I know. But there's one control that I always have in mind that is HTML directly. It's it's not ActiveX, but yeah. Okay. I, I um, don't understand why. How would it not be ActiveX? I mean, you you have to duck? display is it, something. You have to is, display is it, something, it, so you need a browser control. Right, I know, but. <laughs> What I'm saying is the name of the ActiveX control. Is it HTML doc or something like that? Was it? Um, no, here, that's not. That's not a displayable thing. Right. HTML doc is not. You need uh, Shell Explorer. Shell Explorer, but there was something I know that there's you a can, type of object. You can create an object. Uh huh. That you can do HTML stuff with, but you right, can't see it. Okay. 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 Now, this guy, um, yeah, so, and that's the problem. Now, I would have to write the HTML to that page. You see this HTML? I have no, to write it. No, you can, you can navigate to it. Navigate to it, uh, like, oh, to a variable. I can navigate to it? To a, a yeah. local file that is 
Uh, yeah, but I don't want to navigate to a file. I think I, I, I wanted to just. Well, then just, uh, then you need wb.document. wb.doc. Like or document, document. It's actually document. Right. And then. Um, Dot write. Uh, right. 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 Yeah. And then I write the HTML, right? Yes. Yeah, but those. It, is that um, maybe because I don't have anything in here? Let me see. Hold on. No, no, no. That's not it. Why um, is there a quote? Why, why is there any quotes? Where? What, what are those the, the quotes? Oh, because I have the the normal. Uh, the, what, what version is this? Yeah, version what? one. Yeah, you can do that in version one. You can use the, the quotation marks, like, for example. Well, okay. Um, so you just, can't. That's just it, weird. It is. <laughs> the yeah. thing is that I really do not use the normal equal sign ever. Now I just use the the equal uh, the colon equals, and obviously that is going to be a a, a um, how do I say like a, a an expression. So you have okay. to use the quotation. Go to your GUI. Go to your GUI. Right. So I'm in the GUI. Your, no, no, no. Go to the actual GUI. Okay. The so one that's displayed. Go. Right. But you had it uh, right click. I can't. Nope. Nope. Interesting. No, because actually that's a, a control that it is not really, I have to capture those messages like the escape, the enter, all those things I have it's to do. I'm sorry? Right click on anything. Yeah, but that's it's different. It is because it's an active X control. This is a little bit different. Now, if I create a com object, yeah, I can. Like if I can create a, but it a is shell a com object, but not with a shell explorer like this. Probably the Internet Explorer application. No. Internet no. Explorer application, no, maybe. No, that won't actually work. Okay. That I could use it as a com object. That's for sure. Okay. Um, but, yeah. But the, 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 there's there's another route here. So go ahead and change it back to the shell explorer. Right. All right. And, and do wb navigate. Navigate to about blank maybe. Yes. Because. Uh, and then okay. I would and then you're going to have to sleep or something and then do the document right because uh, the the thing I just remembered is there has to actually be a document for there to be a right. Right. Okay. But, but you, you have to yeah, account for to, some amount of load yeah. time. Just wow. make it. Yeah. yeah. WB.busy. Uh, busy. Uh, WB. Started uh, ready. Status. No, no, no! Don't use ready state. That's, uh, that's uh, the one that I usually use. I I don't like yeah. busy. The thing is that busy sometimes uh, gives if something there, else. If there's if there's AJAX, uh, XHR as everybody's right. calling it, uh, right. then then it might matter, but uh, it yeah. doesn't. Oh, there yeah. it is. Yeah. So we have our button here. Yeah, there just has to be a, a, a document before you can write. Right. That. Okay. So, uh, yeah. The All right. So now you need a uh, script section in your head. Right. Right. So now we have a script, and probably I would have to write, but that would be like JavaScript there. Or, yeah, it would JavaScript by default. Right, exactly. So now uh, that script, and this is the part. So I have my button, right? Let me go ahead and verify something. Right, exactly. So this is my button. Now, what I do want to, and this is the part that I haven't actually figured out. If I figured this one out, that would be all, is how to grab any element connected to whatever it is to. Run, for example, my function out here, mm -hmm. right? So that's the one thing. If I know how to do that, then I'm good to go. 
Okay, so so you the first of all, uh, back to the correction I made for you. Uh, this is a com object. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it is an ActiveX com Dude. object. Okay, I get it. No, there's no qualifier to that. ActiveX is just web enabled. Okay. So it's, it is a com object. So okay. is there uh, a way uh, in Auto High Key to set up uh, event monitors for com ops? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, is, there, set up? is there a way to monitor events? Yes. Yes. In, you okay. can com object connect. So uh -huh. com object connect. And uh -huh. that would be the WB object, I would say. And the prefix uh, would be anything that says my fun, my, for example. And that would be any function that has that no, prefix. All right. No, no, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Back up, you're, you're getting ahead of yourself, okay? Because now we're looking for browser objects. We're not looking for browser objects. We're looking specifically for document objects. So after oh, the no. document. Right, okay, so I could have my document uh, so, yeah, so do I the could, com object connect after you write. So let me go ahead and do this. Uh, what are you What are you doing? So probably just saving the document object into its own object. So now I have the document right here, and now I would connect to the. Uh, okay. Maybe that would work. Uh, yes. Um. That, that is what did you do what yeah, did huh. you do ray <laughs> no, no no the thing is that this script has something funny in it that i have to fix but yeah whatever now okay. in any case i would do, just do this in, a, in its own line just to make it kind of like very readable that, 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 that's fine so um now typically we want to connect to a class Otherwise, when you, say a class, when you say a class, what are you talking about? All right, define a new class. I don't care what you call it. Call okay. it my for all I care. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, define it at the bottom of the script. Yep. Okay. And then, so now the methods have to be defined as valid HTML events. Mm. Okay, so the method right, so, would be, so, uh, so it would so be. do on click on click right okay. so it would be like a like a uh-huh okay um and i am trying to remember uh because since they changed all of this whenever they incorporated com um i think we have to give it on oh, like a a parameter uh of whatever i don't think it matters what you call it just humor me make and it make it yeah no no don't set a default no i'm making it optional so that if no in case no of what... no okay. there's always a parameter okay which is the event okay um right. so so param is the event okay okay no but uh, hold on the event uh, if the event wouldn't be on click itself or. Okay. Uh, bear with me here. So mm -hmm. within, within JavaScript, the event is attached to an the object. Function. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So on click is an event, but the event parameter is actually attached to the object that generated it. Okay. Okay. I get it. <laughs> so it itself is being passed to the same function that you know so so the event is actually passed as a parameter to the function method that is going to be actually executed right right okay um and, and i don't think uh when we define these as in auto hockey we have to do it it's case sensitive but if we did the c would be capitalized um yeah i told you microsoft documentation is a pain no i preferred the Microsoft documentation for um, oh well, uh, the the one thing that I do not like about it is the fact that you are looking for one specific topic, and they have they have been working at it for so many years that they have different 
uh, they have different versions of the same information. And it is kind of like uh, for, for older versions and newer versions. So you have to know exactly which object you're referring to, right? So you cannot just find it. It's just like very complicated. Now, but I'm not sure what are you looking for? Ah, right okay, now? okay. Uh, hang on, let me get there. Um, because there we go. Okay. That was the one I was trying to remember. All right. Uh, there's a chat. Okay. Great. So you tell me. Uh, so I, I, I sent a, a Zoom chat item. Uh, okay. SR, SRC element. So we should. But what what am I going to use with this? So event this is dot event dot event dot source element. That's going to be our, my element, right? That actually then, created the event. So now I, I have an now I have an element object, right? Huh? Yeah. So I can do things like um, uh, outer HTML text or uh, what is it? Uh, no, outer first, HTML. So I can uh, do a message so, box with an outer HTML, for example. No, no, hold on. Let me let, let me let me go ahead because right now we haven't actually connected much. So I do have my my button here, right? Now uh -huh. I do connect to the document object. Now we don't want do we you want to uh, grab the events because this come up the connect is gonna actually it, goes to my, it needs to go to my class. Oh, it has to go to this Not class mine. then. Yeah. Right. So I think I think instead of my, I, I could put a class here. I think. Let me just double check on that real quick. Yeah. yeah um, I think it. Uh, uh, the prefix might be. The bar can be an object defined by the script. Okay, so that's that. Go down uh -huh. to the example. Right. Um, so I can have my final parameter, but. Now, now, now that I'm getting this thing, so now I am connected to the correct class right down here. So whenever yeah, I click, and, and I it's going to fire this prefix. guy. I can't remember if you still have to prefix it or not, but because uh, it's changed since the last time I did my. No, no, you don't have to. You don't have to prefix it if you pass an object that I know. Right, uh, but you and should be able. You should so be right able to now, element outer HTML. Now, in this case, so what I want to do right now, instead of working with the element itself. Let me see if when I click, it shows this. Now, the event, uh, the source element, I might want to check that it was from that button itself. So maybe I should have an ID for it. Say for example, ID. Um, my button, mm -hmm. right? And, and you, could do, you could do element.id. So maybe if element, if, I don't think I could do element.id. You can't. Because it will return a string. It would. Let me see. Yeah. Hold on. Um, okay. Or it will say undefined. Yeah, but I think uh, that is from the DOM, for example. It is from the DOM. But the DOM, if I remember correctly, uh, let me see. Hold on. Um, references <laughs> for the DOM object here and the element does not have, I think, oh, says when I don't did it. Okay, good. Yeah, that's good. So in this case would be my button, for example. So mm -hmm. if that is that, I would do this, for example, probably. Yeah, that's but, but, but you're, you're, you're adding complexity just to test whether or not the sound click fires. No, 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 yeah, no, no, no. I just wanted to make sure uh, that I'm getting the click from that button and not, and not a second Well, button. you can do that by message boxing the element ID. Oh yeah, that's well. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah, just doing this. That's, that's that's what I was trying to suggest. Okay. Yeah. So I have that. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let me see my button. That would be where. Um. Oh, the quotation marks. 
yeah, we're gonna play around, but that's the thing. So now, all right. Um, um, so I'm not, so I am connecting and let me confirm one more time just to make sure. That it I'm looks not, like you still had to use a prefix. An yeah. object which raises events, right? If the, the prefix, a string to prefix to the event name, okay? That's to the function. If omitted, the object is disconnected. And now this parameter can be an object defined by the script. I know what is going on because I have never, even though I created my class here. No, it, it's not. No, I have to have an object that has the class on it. No. Go I down cannot... to the example. Go down to the example in the right. documentation there. Uh huh. In the documentation that you had open. Mm hmm. And go down to the example. See there? Yeah. We've the, got... pro the problem is that they're using the prefix, but not the. the this is not a class. So this is different. Now, I created the class, right? But okay. I cannot pass the class name there. I have to pass an object of that class. So now I create the new class, put it in that object, and now I pass the object to it. I think that should no. not work. Okay. Now, um, let me just one minute. And this is the part that I was actually trying something because if the method does not contain the right amount of parameters, does not get called. Now, um, we have the object, right? Um, maybe this is the part that is not working either. So let me go ahead and do this. So that actually has. <coughs> this is actually just the one part that, if we figure that, that's the part that I want to figure out. As soon as I do that, like, yeah, that's not a problem. Now I do see where you're going with this, but the problem is uh, not really sure. Now, uh, try to just click. Now let me try it instead of a. I think let's go ahead and try it with a function. Look, like, let's let's try it with. Uh, okay, my, I mean you can do that. Right. So, oh, give me just one second, guys. Give me just one <coughs> minute. Are you doing? Okay? Obviously not. Not a hundred percent. I'm. Uh, I'm always trying to die. Hey, if you just watched that video and you felt it was a bit over your head. I would recommend reach out to us at joe at theautomator.com and we offer consulting services where we will help educate you and work with you to level you up. To me, it's best ways that you can start learning auto hockey and make really significant jumps is having someone assess where you are and then kind of nudge you a little bit higher and higher um, and get your code worked on by someone who's been doing it for a long time.